مواجهات اسرائيل ومعها العالم بقيام الاف الهاكرز او قراصنة الانترنت Cyber Week 2016 presents Spotlight on Cybersecurity Innovation. Okay, perfect. That was our first session for today. We're going to have another one now. Uh, our next moderator for the next session is Dr. Dorit Dor. She serves as Vice President for Products at Checkpoint. Everybody knows about Checkpoint, right? Uh, Dr. Dor's core responsibilities include leading the company's product management and R&D and QA um, from concept to delivery. She is a STEAM member of the uh, Israeli cybersecurity ecosystem, and she is a known speaker. Do it. The stage is yours. Hi, everyone. I really appreciate you staying in favor of uh, me instead of food, but uh, we'll do our best to get you into food as soon as possible. So uh, I've been at Checkpoint 20 years, and that's uh, a great uh, route to look at innovation and how cybersecurity evolves along these years. And the session is about innovation, and I think one of the things to notice in innovation is that innovation in cyber is a little bit different than innovation in other spaces, and I'll try to give you a taste of why. So what's special about innovation? Let's start with the fact that we are not in control of the situation. There is an adversary out there that changes the data sets, changes the attacks, changing the landscape in which we are being tested. So while we want to create an artificial space in which our, our ideas and our innovations are showing great results. We have to test them in the real life. We have to test them versus the adversary and the adversary changes. We can't ignore the data set. We can create our own data sets, but this is not the reality. When we will come to a POC with customer, they will check us with their own reality. So one is the attack space and the data sets that are not in our control. The second thing that is not in our control is the usage and the user. What is the usage? The usage is, for example, that people move to cloud, that people move to software-defined networking, that people move to systems of type X. All these things impact the way we deliver our security, and this is not in our control. They are not going to change the way they do IT, because of the way we want to defend the world. We have to defend the world in the right places for the new and modern IT that's acting. The second part of usage and users are the users. This is even worse, because the users are completely not in our control, and some would say that even they act against us. If, if we'll tell them not to do X, they may still do X, because it's convenient, or because they don't understand uh, the importance of what we're trying to tell them. So, the users are not acting in favor of us defending them, the usage scenarios in all, are not acting in favor of us defending them, and the data sets and attacks are being forced on us. And so now, we try to bring technology into the picture. So mainly people, when talking about innovation, will consider the technology part as the innovation. And I'll talk about technology in, in, in few slides as well, but I wanted to start by saying that innovation in the cybersecurity space is much broader, and we can't just come with the technology alone to the innovation. We'll have a great session because we'll have speakers from all angles. We have uh, Bharat that will speak about uh, the cloud offering coming from Microsoft and how it ties into security. Um, We'll have Nadav that will talk about how to promote innovation in uh, different ways. 
Um, and we'll have uh, Douglas from DHS that will probably share with us ideas and challenges in the innovation space. Um, so these are all tying to this triangle and it's very important to understand that when we come to explain our innovation, we can't just ignore the picture and look at our own technology as a silo. In addition, and this is uh, talking to uh, the customers and the vendors in the audience, um, we have to solve real problems. What do I mean by real problems? Um, the first thing is that I hear many people say, okay, here's innovation, and they come with a statement, not realizing that the same statement are heard today from hundreds of companies. Uh, we all learn to say the right marketing terms. We say in this session alone many, many buzzwords. And so the customers look at all this and he doesn't know what to do. It, so the first action into innovation is how to get noticed. Because even if you have the greatest innovation, you may be uh, ignored just because nobody knows what is your innovation unless you figure out a way in which your innovation would be at the front light and will be understood by a wide variety of people. So some of the ways to be understood is, for example, to be measured. One of the things in the industry is that we stopped measuring ourselves. Each of us comes with a, a, prob with a solution uh, and say, okay, here's something that nobody else solved. But there are hundreds of people, each of them comes with three things that nobody else solved, and the user is not going to buy 100 different things. So now um, he has to measure the things that are important to them. He would usually do this in a POC. He will create his own data set, his own environment, his own types of favorable attacks, and he would measure your innovation in, in, in front of this you know, uh, scenario that he built. And the judgment of are you doing a real thing is not just in what you are able to show, is it solving a real single attack, but does it show up in a real customer POC? Can you convince the customer to do the POC that will show the case? If I put you in the network, will I see any relevant event within the next 30 days so I'll know that it's worth it for me? The third element of showing up and solving a real problem is, if it is a real problem, then it has budget. Is it already in my budget? Is it already something I noticed? And is it kind of a niche problem? Is it something that is an isolated problem that I'll have to invent a new budget for? So with that, I want to uh, go very, very quickly into some other notes that, uh, that uh, explain the bigger picture, and the bigger picture is really solving a variety of solutions in, inside the customer problem, tying them all together, either through partnership, as the previous speaker mentioned, or as a single point of view. And we want all of that to come with innovation. Innovation that, as I said, comes from understanding the attack surface, comes from understanding the customer challenge, and come from the freedom to imagine a few solutions. I'll give two very quick uh, examples of technologies that you could imagine within the big picture, but the main point is that each of them is a point technology that comes to solve a problem, and without the bigger picture, it doesn't add the value that is needed. So here are two examples of technologies like that. One example, is about attacks that are not coming with malware. The most common way to attack you not coming with a malware is to steal your credential. And it's not that difficult to steal your credential. You could trick the user into giving them by behaving as somebody else, or you could ring, uh, sorry, or you could, uh, there is inconsistency between the picture here and the picture there, or you could, um, uh, find a place where uh, they are already using this credential and assume that they have reused the credentials. So uh, these are uh, relatively good tricks to steal the end user credential. And why are they relatively good tricks? Is because um, from the moment that um, I sent out my tricks, I, I asked you to fill up your credential in something, there will be a few hours until I'll be blocked. 
You could stay a few hours, it's a great time for blocking, and that's all great. But we as users act much faster. If we get an email today offering us to do something or to resolve a problem or a technician working in our environment, we will act within minutes. So there is a time of few hours for the system to close out our uh, networks. And there is a, second, a few second uh, event in which the user will read his email, click the link, and put his credential in. So this shows the challenge to be linked to the data, to be linked to it online, and to defend to it in real life. And while it sounds like a consumer problem, it's an enterprise problem, because guess what? People have many passwords and they don't remember all of them. So they either write them on the board, stick them somewhere, or they would use their own beloved credentials again and again and again. So you may use, you may think you have special credential in the enterprise, but you actually reuse the credentials of the consumer. Um, the other side of this is the sites. If nobody could imitate the sites, there would be a problem, but we see sites being Im imitated all the time, and we see people using this to steal credentials from others. So here comes a real problem. It's one of hundreds of problems like it that you have to solve in order to make your users secure. And no other problem uh, solving any malware or any other parts of the problems discussed so far will solve this problem. This is a problem that needs a direct solution and a direct innovation in order to solve it. This is a problem that needs something that will be a zero day, immediate, you have very short window before the site gets closed, to understand that somebody is stealing attacks, to understand that this is a site that is imitating itself, and to understand if credentials are really reused. So this is one example, and very quickly, I'll go to another example, which is understanding the attacks themselves. Uh, we looked at the problem, again, one of many, many problems in this space. The problem is to understand forensics information. There are tons of information, tons of events. You could sit down many people and Udi talked about uh, the, the uh, problem of having uh, the right educated people to go over events, to analyze the events. And so what we've done is we've taken a team of top malware analysts and we said, can you create a program that will do the analysis that you will do? And a few years later, with multiple patent insights, we were able uh, to take some problem that is uh, kind of looking at the PC with many events inside, looking at all the data that gets collected from these events, and creating a coherent picture from all of that, something that will make uh, direct sense into an application. So, uh, what makes a direct sense is to understand the exact flow of attacks. When I saw an external event, what driven the event itself, what DLL downloaded the events, etc. So, these are very good point solutions. They bring a lot of innovation. They give us the freedom to imagine within a space of the problem. But here, the challenge for our panel will be, um, can we imagine a place where threats are being blocked early on before they made damage, and are we solving the real challenge or not just point solutions? So I think this is the challenge for all of us. Uh, we all enjoy bringing technology for the point parts, but we have to solve the whole uh, picture of things. With that, I'll invite the first speaker, Barat Shah,